Welcome back. This lesson focuses on recursion as part of the Python Advanced series of lessons. And this is the last lesson in our series, which tackles all the programming skills required for paper four of the Cambridge A-level syllabus. Now we did touch a bit on recursion when we were dealing with binary tree traversals as part of the lesson on abstract data types. Chances are that you've got some experience on recursion. So at some stage, once you've finished this lesson, I would probably say go back and revisit abstract data types, especially the binary tree traversal part, so you can connect things a bit better with the traversal algorithms. Chances are that you will get an exam question related to traversal, and you need to be 100% confident in dealing with binary tree traversals using recursion. Okay, let's begin today's lesson, and we'll start by looking at what recursion is. Recursion is when a function or a procedure calls itself. There's an example on the right hand side of the screen where you can see a function called recursion and you'll see that within the code it calls itself. It takes the argument x, doubles it and then calls itself with the results as the new argument and it will keep calling itself recursively, doubling the argument each time and printing out the results until it encounters an error due to reaching Python's maximum recursion depth or simply running out of memory. And that's the problem with recursion. If you don't have something called an exit condition, you can get stuck in this infinite recursive calls and you're gonna keep adding to the recursion stack, the first recursive call, then the second one, then the third one, and keeps going on and on and on until you run out of memory and the computer crashes. And that's the problem with recursion. Recursion is fantastic, it's very elegant, it's refined, takes less lines of code, but if you don't have a sensible exit condition, you're gonna end up consuming a huge amount of computer resources. Okay, let's start by looking at the base case. The base case and the general case are two important concepts in recursion that are used to control the flow of a recursive function. The base case is the condition that determines when the recursion should stop. It's also called the exit condition. It is the condition that prevents the function from calling itself again and again and allows the function to return a value. In other words, the base case is the stopping point for recursion. It is the case where the problem is simple enough that the function does not need to call itself. And if you don't have a base case in your recursive function, you're going to get into that problem we were talking about a moment ago. So what about the general case? Well, the general case, on the other hand, is the opposite of the base case. It is the condition that determines when the recursion should continue. In the general case, the function is not yet at the stopping point and needs to call itself again with a smaller, simpler version of the problem. You keep breaking the problem down into simpler chunks until you reach that base case. And when you reach that base case, you stop. So the general case continues until the base case is reached and that's the exit condition, and then it unwinds itself. Okay, let's modify our previous example to ensure that it doesn't crash. So we need to put in a base case, and the base case we're going to put in is when the value of y exceeds or equals 10,000, the recursion will stop. So in this particular case, when y is less than 10,000, keep calling the function. So recursion y is called, if it's less than 10,000, the moment y is equal to 10,000, the recursion will stop. So when you do recursion four, it's gonna keep doubling all the way up to 10,000, and then if it reaches 10,000 or exceeds 10,000, it'll stop. So what is a recursive algorithm? It's any algorithm that has a base case, it works towards that base case, has a general case, and calls itself. So in an exam, that's the answer you'd probably give to get two or three marks. It has a base case, it has a general case, it calls itself, and it keeps working towards that base case. Now try to complete the algorithm on the right. Pause the video and see if you can attempt this exam question. This normally comes up in paper three, in pseudocode form, and then we'll look at coding it. Okay, hopefully you got something like this. The first one was number, because the number integer value needs to come in. It was given in the pseudocode later on. If mod of that is not equal to zero, then you decrement, and after that you output the number. If number is greater than zero, then you've got to do a recursive call, and in pseudocode we simply call the function, so call count number minus one. And that's all there is to this pseudocode. 
Hopefully you got this. Okay, time for you to practice and create a recursive program. So create one that works out the factorial of any number that is input by the user. The base case is when the number reaches zero, the answer is one. Use the function with a parameter, I put the answer. So pause the video and have a go. On screen is a possible solution. We've got a factorial function which takes a number. If the number is equal to zero, answer is equal to one, else answer becomes number times factorial of number minus one, and we keep doing it until we reach that exit condition of number equals zero. Outside the selection, you return the answer because we want to return the answer back to the main program. Outside the function, we take the input, so number is the integer input of whatever the user is going to type in. We're going to then print the factorial number out, which is going to be whatever the answer is. So run the code and have a go test it out and see if it actually gives you the right factorials. And that's about it to recursion really. Uh, we're not going to cover binary tree traversals and all of those because we've already covered those. That's the only, only bit that you'd be linking this to now. So my suggestion would be go and watch the video on abstract data types, the binary tree traversal section, see whether you can identify where the base case, where the general case is. That's all there is to recursion really, a function that calls itself and it's pretty easy to do in Python. So hopefully you understand the purpose of recursion. Hopefully you understand the difference between a base case and a general case. Hopefully you've also experienced use of recursion in Python today and you can now code recursive algorithms, hopefully binary tree traversals. And if you can't do that, once again, go and watch that particular video. That's all there is to Python. And with that, this series of lessons comes to a close. I hope you got some knowledge out of it and you are practicing your Python skills because paper four technically is a really easy exam. You don't have to memorize a lot. Once you know these skills, that's it. You can walk into an exam and you will ace it and you'll come out with 65, 70 out of 75 pretty easily. Why not 75 out of 75? Because we're all human and we all end up making silly mistakes like not closing files or misspelling something or not having our comment statements and the data type declarations done, something along the lines of that. The only way you can get around it is to practice, 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 and the more you practice, the better you're going to get at this. Okay, that's all from me for now. I'll see you whenever the next video comes. If you do have any questions, as usual, post them in the comments. Bye for now.